My name is Christy O'Hara, and um, I'm a professor of landscape architecture at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo, but I'm also a board member for the National Association for Homestead Parks, and am a chair of their research committee. So the way that Olmsted Jr. informs my work is as a professor of landscape architecture, it's really important that we understand the ecological process of a landscape before we do any kind of design. I think Olmsted's focus on that with his work of a lot of infrastructure analysis before beginning any kind of interventions is a really important model that we teach students because we can't unwind a lot of design that's already been implemented. So if we're very careful, we can create a sense of nuance of, of gently moving in the design that um, acknowledges and works with the existing ecology of a place. When I think of the work that I do in the way that it um, conserves resources, I, I'm an, a preservationist. And so when I look at historic landscapes, my focus is usually to try to see how I can either landmark them or do some kind of a report that provides um, an educational framework for anyone behind me so they understand what's important or significant about that place. To me, some of the issues with preserving parks relate to not having enough money to maintain them. Uh, that parks become um, a place that's degraded or not beautiful anymore, and you see attendance going down in some of those places. Um, additionally, we have a lot of children that won't go outside. So including my own, even though they'll go outside if we go camping, they'll go outside if we have a designated activity, but they won't go outside for passive kinds of play. So I think finding a way that we can connect children to these natural environments and not have them be bored is one of the challenges of the next generation. The research that I've done on the California park system shows an immense amount of visionary ideas on the part of Olmsted Jr. towards the California state parks. At the time that he was asked to make the recommendations in the 1920s, he was uh, well versed on the whole state and makes a very comprehensive list of if we could, these are the places that we would catch, including places like Hearst Castle, which eventually that landscape in San Simeon comes back as a state park. But he really had this really broad understanding of, of the landscape. So when you look at the work in Brookline, Massachusetts, he's got all the before pictures of the desert places, the mountain places, the redwood places that he would keep. And he actually documented in these places so that when he went forward with recommendations, he also had a background of, of what these beautiful places look like.